Mike Mercer's missing link is a pattern that I've come to depend on. It's proven effective in situations ranging from a searching pattern to light hatches and even into blizzard hatches. This amazing transitional pattern is one that I highly recommend having on hand in your box. The recipe for the pattern is shown here in print. And pause the scroll here if you need to get your materials together. We start out by debarbing the Chemco 2487 hook. They do also sell these in barbless form, so you want to save yourself a little bit of time there. I usually attach the thread on this pattern at about the midpoint of the hook. And as usual, we'll pop off or snip the tag end of thread. And bring in your one strand of pearl flash. And wrap that back to about the point where the hook bend starts to become perpendicular to the vise. At this point, you want to return your thread back toward the eye of the hook. And I usually gauge the approximate distance with the width of my scissor blades. As you'll see me just check it here. After you've returned that thread, you want to wrap that pearl flash forward, leaving a little bit of space between each of the wraps, and simply tie that off when you reach your thread. And the next step here is optional. I'm a huge stickler on trying to make your patterns as durable as possible, so I prefer to coat the abdomen with a little bit of clear cure goo. I feel that it goes a long ways in enhancing the durability of the fly and keeps that flash from unraveling. Once you've cured that, you know, bring in anywhere from four to six little strands of peacock ice dub that you just plucked off the edge of a, a clump of the, out of the packet. And just spin that on there. And this will be our little dubbing ball that will go in just prior to the underwing. I prefer to put down a small drop of zapagath underneath. Just kind of locks the fibers in and adds the durability of the fly. You want if there are stray fibers sticking up you can trim those off then we're going to bring in the uh, gator hair it's a product made by montana fly company i prefer it over some of the typical zelon and some of the other stuff that's out there i give the bobbin just a little bit of a spin here to help that thread jump back and you'll pull half that down on one side of the body half of it down the other i usually grab a general amount of the gator hair if you want to be precise and shoot for six to eight strands of the gator hair for that underwing material. At this point, you'll bring in your grizzly hackle. The hackle should be a size 12 or slightly larger than a size 12 for the overwing here. Remember, when you tie that in, make sure that the arch or that the curve of the feather is facing down. Next, you grab a small amount of elk hair. Always keep in mind that less is more in this situation. You want the post to be visible and you want it to be there, but you don't need to overload it with the elk hair. I prefer to come in and I'll get a hold of the hackle with hackle pliers. And then before I start to wrap, I'll reach up and under the hook. And I'm just going to hold those gator hair fibers down and out of the way for the first wrap or two. And that ensures that they don't get pushed up or trapped. I'm going to take two or three upward wraps, and then I'm going to come back down and kind of weave the last wrap or two in and around those first few wraps. Once I get it at that point, I'm very simply going to slide the nose of my bobbin all the way up to the eye of the hook, make one wrap around it, and then I'll once again press the nose of that bobbin up around the eye and very tightly take two or three wraps to secure it. That prevents me from getting those hackles trapped and squeezed down below the eye where I don't really ideally want them. The next step here, I'm going to come in and the butt ends of the elk hair, we want to clip those off nice and short, about an eighth of an inch uh, above the rest of the fly. So we just have those fine points sticking up for the post. Once you have that situated, you can come in and whip finish, or I'll just throw a couple half hitches in here in this situation to finish off the fly. I 
I like to also take a drop of Zappa Gap. I'm going to put a small drop on the back side and on the front side of that post. Uh, same as you do with like a pair of Adams. Just keeps that hackle from coming unraveled once you get into a few fish. And it further increases the durability of the fly. I'll also put a drop right on the bottom side of the uh, thorax there. Gives a little bit of flash and holds everything in place. And that's your completed Mercer's Missing Link.